Have you ever wanted to know how to change the color of an object inside Luminar Neo? If so, this is the video for you. It's actually a really simple two-step process. The first thing we need to do is let Luminar Neo know what the object is that we want to change. And then secondly, we need to tell Luminar what that adjustment is. So in this case, we're going to mask whatever we want to change the color of, and then we're gonna change that color to the new color we want. Let me show you how we do it. And a good demonstration would be on this photo here. So I'm just going to revert this to the original so you can see where we came from. So revert to original and you can see that it's quite a change for both her clothing and the background as well. So how did I do that? Well, like I say, very easy. So the first thing we want to do is jump into the edit section and the tool that we're going to use is the color tool. When you open the color tool, it may look like this to you, but you want to drop down the HSL, which stands for the hue, saturation and luminance. And this is the area where we can usually control specific colors of our photo. So I'll grab the red slider there and you can see that I can increase the saturation and desaturate it. I can come into the hue of the reds and you might think, okay, well, that's where we're actually going to change the color of the red dress. We're going to grab the red slider and move that. And yes, we can remap the color from red and push it more into a magenta or an orange, but that's the limitation. That's as far as we can take it. So what we need to do is actually come all the way down here to the hue shift. This is gonna remap every color in our scene. And you can see that as I move this hue shift slider, we're able to change every color in the photo. But obviously we only want to change a specific part of the photo. In this case, we're going to work on her clothing. And one thing to note with the hue shift slider is you'll see there's a number here and it ranges from minus 180 to zero in the middle all the way up to 180. So those numbers sound familiar, right? They are referencing degrees on a wheel. And so this line is actually a color wheel unraveled. And so if we take what was at zero, the red, if we move it to 180 degrees, that is the opposite side of the color wheel. So if you move the hue shift to 180 degrees, any color is mapped to its opposite complementary color. But for our example, let's change her red top into a blue top. So it's super simple to change the colors in our photos, but there is more to it than that. And we're gonna come back and revisit some of those little subtle nuances. But for now, let me show you how we now tell Luminar Neo where we want to apply that. And of course, that is with our masking section. So jumping in here, we have several options and different ways that we could approach this. And one of the easiest would be to jump into Mask AI, let it do its analysis, and then choose the human element. That's gonna leave the mask completely over the lady here. So you can now see that we have restored the yellow background, but now our lady is completely blue. So we can combine a quick AI mask with a technique where we erase that effect where we don't want it from. So using the brush, and if we switch to the erase mode and we make sure we have 100% strength, wherever we paint over now, we're going to get rid of that effect. And when I'm working with masks like this, what I like to do is come in and focus on the edge itself. And what I like to do is just go back and forth between the paint and the erase mode to try and get a really nice clean edge and how much effort you put into your masking is entirely up to you. Obviously, the longer you spend and the more precise you are, the better the results are that you're gonna have. This isn't a tutorial on comprehensive masking techniques, so I'm just gonna speed through this. I'm basically switching between the paint and the erase mode and making sure I have a slightly soft edged brush that matches the transition between the clothes and the skin. And now we've got our mask in place, we can look at the before, bright red top and our after we've turned it blue. So we've successfully changed the color, but what about some of those pitfalls that I mentioned before? Well, let's suppose that we want to make a darker blue than we have here. Well, you might think, well, I know how to do that. I need to jump into the luminance, which controls the brightness values. Then you come down to the blue slider and you're gonna make it darker. You bring that down, you think, oh, well, what's going on there? It didn't get darker, why not? Well, the reason for that is it's not an error. The tool that's working at the moment is referencing the original photo. So it's actually making adjustments based on the original photo that's there before the effects are applied. So if you want to darken down the color of the clothes, you need to go, well, that's actually the red pixels. So it's the red slider that we would need to bring down to actually make the blue darker. The same goes if we wanted to change the specific saturation of that blue as well. If we wanted to make it a more muted gray tone, then we'd need to bring the red slider down as well. 
Now you can see I've made a relatively good mask. I'd give it maybe a seven out of 10 at the moment because it's still a bit rough and ready in some places. And I should definitely clean that up if I want a convincing result. But it's not just the transition between the clothing and the skin or clothing in the background that we need to be concerned about. It's also reflected light. So if you notice down here on her arm, we have a red glow and that is the reflected red light from the original bit of clothing. And as you'll know from me preaching this on my other videos, if you want a successful photo edit, you need to mimic what happens in reality. And so if she's wearing a blue top, we need to create a reflected blue light on the arm and get rid of that red. And the easiest way to do that would be to let the mask bleed over the arm here. And so I'm gonna grab the paintbrush and this time have a really nice soft edge. I'm gonna bump the size up and I'm gonna bring the strength down because what I want to do is build this up in passes. And so I'm just clicking and brushing over that arm and I can keep doing that until I've pushed that red more into the blue color. And if we feel like we've gone a little bit too much, which I think we might've done, we can just go back to the erase mode and just bring a little bit of it away. All right, before and after, that's close enough. And just to be sure that we have none of that effect on her face, because I think there was a little bit on her lips there, I'll just do another big pass with the strength at 100 to clear that mask up. I find that part of the challenge with photo editing is trying to create the result you're after in as quick a time as possible. And Luminar Neo is excellent for giving us a lot of tools that give us quick shortcuts for things. And one of the newly introduced tools allows us to select by color. Now it's not perfect, but when you have large blocks of color like we do in the background of this photo, it can be ideal as a time saver for masking. Let me show you. So I'm gonna close that color tool down and jump back into the main tool section. Now this time, rather than making my adjustment to the hue shift first, what I'm gonna do is forget any adjustment and just work on my mask first, because it doesn't matter which way round you do it. You can mask first, add the effect, or add the effect and then mask it in. It makes no difference to the outcome. So for this masking technique, I'm going to try the color option. What that allows me to do is come over to, onto the picture once I've selected it, and we have this little color picker icon. And when we click on the photo, it makes a selection based on that color. So if I click around the photo on different areas, you can see how it's selecting based on those colors. Now, if I go back to the yellow, you can see that for the most part, it's a nice clean selection. But if you want to select more, like down here, we haven't picked up any of this yellow down here. What we can do is grab the range slider and start to increase that. As I push that up, it's gonna pull more yellows into my selection. But you can see, even if I go all the way to 100, we still don't have this little area here. It's no big deal at this point. What we're after is trying to give us a shortcut around the more difficult areas to mask, like around the hair, around the shoulder, and the clothing as well. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not very happy with the accuracy of this tool at the moment, but if we're after a quick way to mask that background, this is a really great option. So if I show the mask, you can see what we've got selected there. Now I'm gonna to come to the brush and just add in this little area here, just with one click, super easy. And now I can come back to the adjustment section and whatever I want to do will now affect only the background because of that mask. I think for this example, what I'm gonna do is go for a desaturated version, but I just wanted to show you something. I'm working with a JPEG file at the moment, which I don't normally do. I strongly recommend working with RAW, but you can see here, if I double click to reset the hue shift to its original yellow color, you can't really see that JPEG compression very well. But as soon as I start changing that color and push it into that blue, that kind of cyan blue, we can really see that pixelation. So that's another thing to bear in mind when you're making these kind of color adjustments based on JPEG files. But rather than change the color in this one, what I'm gonna do is actually just desaturate the background so we have a nice neutral palette. And let's say we want to brighten this up as well. What we can do is actually borrow the mask that we just created. So within that color tool, if I come to the masking section and I look at mask actions at the bottom here, I can take the mask that we created before and copy it. Then I can use that same mask on any other tool. So the easiest way to brighten something up is just with the exposure. We can bump that up. You can see that that's affecting the whole photo. But now if I come to masking, I can just paste in the mask that we created before. And now you see that it's not affecting her, only the background. And now we can come in and make a refinement just so it looks a little more natural, just a slightly brighter background. 
So now if we come to the split screen, we can see on the left hand side our original and then on our right hand side how we were able to change those colors. So before and after. If you've enjoyed this lesson and you like the way I teach, you might be interested to know that my full photo editing course that takes you right from beginner all the way to mastery level is available at the moment with a 50% discount. I'll put a link to that and the discount code in the description below. So help yourself to that. I'd love to have you along for that whole 18 hour course. We can learn right from woe to go whatever that means. But I look forward to seeing the course. Do let me know if you like this video with a thumbs up and I'd love to hear from you in the comments if there's anything specific that you would like to learn from Luminar Neo and you're not interested in the course, uh, I'll see if I can make time to create a video for you here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.